Hey guys, welcome back to Ralph's house where we paint in the heart and we have a lot of fun doing it. i tell you what, we're going to do a special paint tonight. Uh, there's a young man out in Oklahoma City, uh, Gannon, he's in Miss Sarah Larson's class at school and she says he likes planes and trains and automobiles and all kinds of ships and warships and soldiers and we're going to do, do a train tonight for Gannon and we're going to do this before him. Let's see what we can turn out here. I tell you what, the kind of trains I like to do are well, the old trains we used to have around here, the, the old kind of steam engine trains because it, they're fun to paint because you can build that smoke out and have it, a train even in a paint looks like it's doing something, this is moving along. But how would you paint one of those? And we're going to do this very simple uh, so that you can do this in class. You know, think, take a train in its many parts. We're going to have the front of that train sitting there and that kind of Looks like the front of a train, and we're going to carry this back, and it's looks like a dog food can to me. But that's kind of what it's all about. Because this was a big old boiler, and they built a fire in there, and it's got steam going, and it was just a big old round boiler is all it was. And on the back of the boiler, we had the place where the engineer sat. And it's just a box. Look how simple it is to draw a train. Now, it had a curved roof, curved roof on it. You know why they did that? So when it rained, the rain would run off. We don't want that rain sitting flat on top of that roof. And so we're going to kind of just make a train shape here. And just carry that on back. And it always hung back a little bit further because the engineer had to step down off the train here. And that's kind of where he'd step down. And that engineer, like, he always had a big old window here he could lean on looking out that window. And it had an arch top too. Do you know an arch is stronger than a flat roof? Always put an arch in something when you're building it makes it stronger. And then it had the little window here that, so he could see going forward and it had one on the other side. So he could look out the window and see what was out there in front of him. And that engine probably had a couple of big old wheels on it. Now I'm not real worried about the shapes right now. We're just going to try to get, get it on here. Yeah, see if we get these where we want them to be. So we got a couple of big old round wheels here. Move that forward just a little bit. And see how we move things around? We're not real worried about it. We're just trying to play with this a little bit. It had a couple smaller wheels up front here. These were the guide wheels. This is what kind of guide kept that train running down the track. And that engineer, every once in a while, he'd like to get out back here walk up to the front and see what's going on. So he had a little walkway out here. He'd get out and walk along, get up here and see what's going on. When he got to the front, he had a thing on here called a cow catcher. You know, I guess in the old days, them cows had a habit of getting on the tracks. They didn't want to run over them, so this kind of bumped them off to the side a little bit. And them cow catchers were generally made out of wood. Looks something like that. And that's called your cow catcher. And this step, this platform that came down here, he'd have a set of steps coming down, just like that. So he could walk down. And he probably had one of those on each side. And right above these wheels, that, in that big old empty place, would be another can, almost like a dog food can, turned like this. And this was the, this is where the piston was. See, all that steam, that came, this is a steam engine. It had a fire in here. Stoked the boiler, that steam went to here, and right here, here's the center, here's the wheels. And those wheels had counter bounces, counterweights, because of the way that they moved. You had a piston come out of here. That steam piston moved back and forth. That's why you always heard them trains make them funny noises. And this connected these two wheels together and made these wheels turn. This train rolling down these tracks. See? That no tracks out here somewhere. We're just trying to rough this in right now. We'll see how we can develop this. But it had wheels over on that other side. Had some more moving parts down under here. The carriage it would have carried the train. Just all kinds of works. It had a little short step coming back here. So he can get up and down out of that train. But you know what's I me? Mean? If you built a fire in there, that smoke's got to go somewhere. We've got to give this thing a smile. What if you were driving a train at night? 
got to have a headlight out here. Let's put a headlight out here on front of this train. That way he can see at night. And there's a door to get into that boiler so they can look at it from the front, make sure there wasn't nothing burning up there. But you got to have a smokestack on a train. You know, that it kind of comes around, he come up like this. And, and that's the way it was, but it didn't look very pretty. Well, these engineers, they, they liked their trains. They wanted these fancy smokestacks. So probably what they did, he kind of put him a little flare on there to make it look pretty, and bought it back up. The old engineers, they liked it to look like it. So that just looks real neat. Kind of an expansion thing going there. Trapped that smoke, and in the rain, the rain wouldn't come down the chimney. Kind of made a baffle there. Kept the rain from getting down into that firebox. And in cold weather, you run into snow and into sand and things like that up north. They had a thing called a sand dome right here. And you'd always see it. It'd be a little dome right there on the front of that, sitting there. And it was full of sand. And he could pull a little lever and he'd put sand on these tracks and those wheels got traction. And keeping it up there on top, it kept that sand hot and dry. And it would do what it was designed to do. We had that wheel in the background over there, we'll throw it in here. And of course you had track railroad ties coming across. Got to have our ties in there. So we're just building us a little train. Now I tell you what, there was a real famous train man that lived in Tennessee. His name was Casey Jones. And he was lived in uh, Jackson, Tennessee. And what he was famous for was he had four whistles. He had whistles on his train that whenever he came into the station, he had a four whistle horn and he could play music on it. He played musical notes on it. His train was the old 97. Everybody in Tennessee knows the story of the old 97. And if you're walking along this walkway, we don't want you to fall off. So on the side of this, it had a little handrail. And it had little things to hold it on to the side of the boiler. So, the, so the, part, the engineer could walk along and hold on to this handrail and not fall off. We'd hate for him to fall off this train. And let's get these windows drawn in here a little bit better. Cut that in there. This is what painting's all about. Telling a story. Telling things that you know. Doing things you enjoy doing. And I tell you what, there's a there's a railroad museum in, in Tennessee, that, down here in Chattanooga, that's as fancy as any in the country. And they love for people to come and look at their trains and ride on their trains. And you need to get your mom and dad to take you to go ride on the train. I think you'd probably enjoy that. Because most places, everybody loves a train. I tell you what, our train's coming along a little bit. I hope this is helping you understand how to draw things. Put the pieces together. I tell you what, y'all come.